And we talked about we need to make God our source and our senior partner. Amen. You know, the senior partner is the one that makes the decisions, right? Amen. And God needs to make the decisions in our life. Nobody should argue that. Nobody should have a problem with that. Nobody should even refruit that. We need God to make the decisions in our life. Why does he need to make the decisions in our life? Because he has the most information. Because he is smarter than us. Because he can see from a greater vantage point than us. And we ought to let God make the decisions. And whatever decisions God make, we ought to say, Amen. And it is so. And thirdly, we said uh, that we must get into the life work or find the gifting and the talent that God has created for us. And watch this, in us, because God has created some things in me. God has already endowed something. God is not waiting to see what I'm going to do to figure out what he's going to do. He's already done it. He's already decreed it. He's already ordained it. He says to Jeremiah, before you ever formed in your mother's womb, I had already predestined you to be a prophet to the nations. So God had called Jeremiah to be a prophet before he was even born. And I believe that God has called you to do some things and God has called me to do some things before I was even born, before I was even fashioned. And what I got to do is stop trying to be like somebody else and try to be what God has called me to do don't let ever let anybody impress you so that you're trying to copy somebody you're trying to carbon somebody you do know copying and carboning somebody that means that you always a second rate why be a second rate when you can be first rate Amen. God has called me to be what he has called me to be. And I need to be asking and seeking God's will for my life. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto me. All right, let me give you three more and then we'll be done for the day. All right. We must have faith that God will bless us. Go to Psalm, the 37th chapter. Psalm 37. Amen. Verses 3 through 5. I'm not going to wait for you all because I'm moving this morning. All right, Psalm 37, 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord uh, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord and trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He's talking about faith. He's talking about walking by faith. He's talking about living by faith. When you trust in the Lord and when you believe in the Lord, uh, then you are counting on him. You are believing that he is the one that is going to see you through. He is the one that is going to make a way for you and sometimes we get to relying on people and as soon as we get to relying on people too heavily remember last week I talked about we begin to be unbalanced and when you find yourself getting off balance the least little thing can knock you over but when you are balance it take a whole lot of pushing and shoving to knock you over and when you are with the Lord and when you are counting on him then you are balanced and it takes a whole lot to move you and knock you over but just when you start thinking that people are your savior and people will help you and people you can depend on them people will pull the rug out and you'll follow, find yourself on the ground but in this day trust in the Lord and do good and he will bring it to pass. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. You want some desires? Amen. First of all, you shouldn't want any desires that God has not ordained for you. You shouldn't want anything so bad that God has not willed for you to have. But if you can have the desires of God, if you can say, Lord, your ways are not my ways and your mind is not my mind and your thoughts are not my thoughts, so I'm getting ready to let my thoughts and mind and ways decrease and I'm getting ready to let your thoughts your mind and your ways increase in my life so I'm getting ready to get on my knees and instead of praying for a Ferrari and instead of praying for a husband and instead of praying for a brand new job Lord let your will be done in my life and I will be satisfied with it I will be satisfied with it am I helping somebody today amen don't play with me am I helping you today 
2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, we walk by faith and not by sight. Is there anybody walking by sight? You might think you can see, but what are you looking at? Oh man, I can see everything in front of me, but what are you looking at? You might not be looking at that which God desires for you. You might not be looking at that which God has purpose for you. 1 John, the 5th chapter, and the 4th verse. I love this. Amen. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So if we have been born again, then we have the power and the authority to overcome the world. The world should not overcome us, but we should overcome the world. What's greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. So then if he is the greater one on the inside of us, then we should have the ability and the power and the authority to overcome that which is in the world. All right, 1 John 5 and 4, whatever is born of God overcomes the world, period. And this is the victory. Somebody shout victory. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. He's not talking about this is the victory that has overcome our faith. It is the victory that has overcome the world. It is our faith. Our faith is that which overcomes the world. Have you ever had some things happen in your life that you cannot explain? Have you ever had things that God has done for you that you know you didn't deserve and people try to ask you to explain it and people try to ask you, well, how'd that happen? Well, how'd you do that? And sometimes people always think that it is political. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I was voted in as a presiding bishop of this organization by acclamation. I didn't even have to have my name appear on the ballot and the, and the, and the business meeting, the house, we call it the house, the general body, they decided to vote Bishop Ellis in by acclamation. I didn't even know what that means. I said, what that mean? And one of the bishops, he, 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 he uh, recommended that. I recommend that we vote Bishop Ellis in as a presiding bishop by acclamation. I asked Bishop Bowers, what does that mean? That means that your name doesn't have to appear on the ballot. You won't even have to be printed on the ballot. Nobody has to vote for you. We're getting ready to do it right now. Folks say, well, how'd you do that? How'd you cut that deal? How'd that happen? I don't know how that happened. I was expecting to be on the ballot and whoever want to run can run and and the Lord's will will be done. So sometimes God does things for you. I don't deserve it. I ain't the perfect guy. I ain't the best guy in the world. But sometimes God does things for you that you cannot explain. And you say, I'm glad I'm a faith walker. I'm glad that I trust in God. I'm glad that I believe in God. Because while other folk are conspiring against you, God says it's already done. Is there anybody that will walk in the power and the authority of God's will but you can't do it with your natural self. You've got to do it with your faith. You got to do it with your faith. Faith, 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 faith. Tell a neighbor I'm a faith walker. Amen. I'm a faith walker. I'm a faith walker. And you know what a faith walker is? A faith walker is somebody who is walking and they ain't trying to see way down the road. They're just trying to see Jesus. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying?